Learning stuff by punching crime in the face. I'm Kay Wing, and this is, of course, Arkham Wednesday. Today is all about Gotham, because you people won't leave me alone. You know that new police drama masquerading as a Batman pre-TV show? Yeah. I'm going to be telling you my honest feelings on why this show is bad, and explain why it's a terrible Batman show at the same time. Just so you know, I've watched all four episodes that have released, and while it's a unique approach to the characters and an interesting show, it's bad for Batman and a poor representation of the characters. So, let's begin. All right, haters, have fun. Okay, so in case you didn't know, or thank God you haven't watched it, Gotham is a pre-Batman show where our story begins during the murder of the Waynes. Gotham citizens then begin to claw for control of the city and maintain some type of control in this chaos. The city, just like most Batman alliterations, is corrupt to the very core. Every facet, from the politicians, the police, the... Hot dog vendor, who knows? Everybody's evil. It's like an entire city filled with sin. Okay, so yeah, everything's bad. Of course, the Waynes were what kept everything kind of in order, supposedly. Now, Jim Gordon is a transfer cop from Chicago and is new to how Gotham operates. He learns how Gotham is sick and promises Bruce Wayne that he will find his parents' murder. Which, already, that's a problem right there. Most Batman fans know that the unsolved case of the Waynes is one of the reasons Batman does what he does. If it's solved, that's one less reason for Batman to dedicate his entire life to saving Gotham. Because if, you know, he gets some closure, what's the point? The show is also a power struggle between many different mob families, which... I don't mind, that actually works. And that makes a lot of sense because in the comics, it did take a very long time for Gordon to start chipping away at Gotham's organized crime. When Batman finally does arrive on the scene, he smashes down the wall that the GCPD and Jim have continued to put cracks in. Though based on how this series is playing out, Gordon is going to be the one to stop organized crime altogether. Which, okay, I can see like maybe five seasons of that, but instead of doing that, the focus is going to be on Batman's future rogues and their backstories that are all going to be made up because most of these characters don't really have backstories like Penguin, Catwoman, Mr. Zazz, Ivy, Riddler, and yes, even the Joker. With Jim defeating, interacting, or arresting all of them. Right. Oh, and need I remind you, Arkham will play a big role in this series. Not Blackgate, Arkham. Long before Batman. Getting back to the Waynes, though. This show's creators have made their deaths have an impact on this world, much like Nolan's movies did. I guess you could say Thomas and Martha Wayne were seen as the monarchy for the city, which is something that bugs me. See, I've always believed that the Waynes are Gotham's heart, or rather the people's conscience. And without that balance, evil is free to consume everything in its path. Even though Batman is feared by Gotham, he also represents its hope, its desire to be good. Though the role is definitely different than that of his parents. Bruce becomes something else entirely, almost like a spirit of vengeance in a sense. An incorruptible symbol, a watchful guardian. It's Dark Knight, whom casts his shadow over its inhabitants and strikes fear into the hearts of those that prey upon the fearful, creating a world where no eight-year-old boy will lose his family because of some punk with a gun. And yet the show Gotham changes things forever, much like my cat in the background. It's creating a world where Batman, as we know him, won't be necessary anymore. Because of Jim Gordon, who will solve the Riddler's puzzles without Batman. Who will face down the Joker without Batman. Tangle with Poison Ivy, the Penguin, etc., etc., all without the Batman. Okay, so as you can tell, I have some issues with this show, right? So Gotham mainly has two problems that it's going to create. Uh, if this show is going to be like a long-running series like the creators intend. One, Jim Gordon is going to be the one responsible for cleaning up Gotham, so Batman's creation isn't what Gotham will need. If Gotham is already on the road to recovery, it'd be pointless to bring in Batman. Two, if Batman is created, he will be the escalation that causes Gotham to change for the worse. Crime will become a plague, a cancer that would fester and spread in a way its peoples have never seen because of the Batman's appearance. So essentially the show has two paths for Batman. He could become like the Adam West 60s Batman assisting Gotham, answering to the commissioner, whom, you know, basically cleaned up the GCPD and Batman just 
is kind of like the Teen Titans Batman who shows up and points and laughs at stuff with Jim. Or we could get the twisted Frank Miller style Dark Knight Returns Bat, where his methods are too extreme for Gotham and the city has gotten much worse. Now the series is a great cop drama, don't get me wrong. I really enjoy the gritty nature to this stuff and I also like the timeless feel that they kind of incorporate from Batman the Animated Series where you don't know when it takes place. The cars are very old, like 70s New Yorkish style, but they do have um, future technology. So, I mean, I like that they did that, and it's something that Fox actually had a role in Batman the Animated Series, which they did with Gotham. Still, some parts of the show don't belong, like the morning soap opera bits. Take the uh, relationship issues of the Gordons, for instance, because of Renee Montoya's constant interference with Barbara's character, which is just pointless and totally out of character from Montoya. The show acts like a woman can't be faithful to her man, basically, or isn't being true to herself, more like her selfish desires, if you ask me. She isn't showcased as the rock for Jim in his time of need, either. Nope. Gotham stains the character of Barbara Gordon, replacing her with someone who's suspicious of her husband pretty much at every turn, and a drug addict junkie to boot. Something out of Desperate Housewives than, of course, Batman. Not a woman to be relied on, as you can see. Especially with the type of psychological warfare that Jim is going through in Gotham. Without the support of his woman, Jim would have no one to confide in or be his support. In a world that's constantly falling apart around him, he needs Barbara. And when he does finally lose her later in his life, it makes sense that someone else would come in to hold the pieces, like his next wife Sarah or his best friend Batman. So Barbara, early on, is a very important part of Jim's life, and she needs to be the stable one in this relationship, which Gotham wants us to think that Jim can handle pretty much everything like he's Superman or something. And that just really annoys me, which is something we didn't see in Batman Year One, where readers actually felt sorry for Mrs. Gordon when her husband had an affair with Sarah from the department, while she was with child, by the way. While Barb eventually did forgive Jim over time, this did set up a rift in their marriage. Now in the series Gotham, if both characters were unfaithful to one another in the past, then her later actions in this series are very hypocritical towards Jim, when she was doing the same thing right now. Then again, this world is incredibly jacked up because of the political correct way of thinking anyway. No one has an ounce of morality in them, which Gotham continues to prove. Next up, we have my favorite, Harvey Bullock. You know, the detective, the really cool character from the comics and Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, Gotham ruined him too. In Gotham, Harvey is a corrupt cop just like everyone on the force, more or less. Which really irritates me, folks. Harvey might be a little edgy, but he's never really been on the take. Sure, he can be a major jerk and hates capes. I mean, you know, he's pretty adamant about that, but he believes in the law, and he was a good cop, more or less, and one Jim really could rely on when things got tough. In Gotham, Jim seems to help change Harvey over time, or at least that's what the writers are trying to show. Or we'll see Harvey turn completely. And I'm going with the latter, folks. Based on Jim's action with the Penguin by the docks and Harvey's constant reminder about letting the Wayne case go, leads me to theorize Harvey is owned by one of Gotham's leading crime families, like the Falcones or the Maronis. It's almost like the show is leading up to a confrontation where the two cops are going to have to face off. And, you know, Jim's philosophy either is going to pay off or, you know, Bullock is going to do something to Jim. Another issue I have with this Bullock is he's okay with vigilantes, as seen with the Balloon Man episode, which, by the way, is one of the worst episodes of the series so far. He'd rather the Balloon Man go after the corrupt officials so that he doesn't have to do anything. Now, I will tell you, something Harvey hates more than anything in the world, minus stale donuts, is capes. He's very adamant about it. In the animated series, he was always going after Batman and asking the mayor for assistance you know, sometimes even going over Gordon. And in the comics, it was the same thing. He doesn't like capes. The reason why he doesn't like them is it's not like, wow, this is a cool thing that the guy's doing. He doesn't like the fact that they're bending the law, which is something Harvey really believes in, the law. Uh, this character actually reminds me more of Jim's partner in Batman Begins than he does Harvey Bullock. The only thing I would say that is similar to how Harvey feels is when a police officer gets killed. Then he's like, okay, we need to get this guy no matter what. And they did show that in the Balloon Man episode. But, you know, the way they went about it, it still felt like Harvey was a bad guy. So, yeah, I would say that this Harvey shares literally nothing in common with the Harvey 
Bullock that we all know and love. It's Harvey in name only, folks. Now, Harvey may have disagreed and butt heads with people, you know, go go in guns a blazing like a lot of animated series episodes, especially the one with uh, Montoya where they end up going to a warehouse and Harvey, you know, jumps the collar first and ends up getting hurt. And then the two rookie cops and Montoya like run in to assist him and everything goes crazy. But by the end of the episode, everything goes back to normal. It's a great animated series episode. I can't really remember the name of it, but um, it's a fantastic episode and a great Uh, instance of both those characters so what you can gather from that is harvey is a good guy gotham isn't painting that picture for me at all in this series you don't know what side harvey is really on and that right there presents a lot of problems because harvey is always on the side of goodness or good or justice now let's talk about the villains and how they interact with our dashing white knight james gordon the solver of all of gotham's problems future and present Whatever. During the murder of the Waynes, Miss Kyle, whom is like 12 or 13, something like that, after stealing some guy's wallet, she actually witnesses the murder of Thomas and Martha Wayne, thus becoming a key witness to finding the real killer. Over the course of the pilot, another man is killed and, of course, labeled as killing the Waynes and Gordon becomes the hero, blah, blah, blah. Though in reality, Jim knows that that wasn't the guy and keeps the case open and keeps bothering a minor, Selena Kyle, which is pretty lame. Uh, actually, um, having Selena in the show so far and the interaction between her and James, it's like cheesy comedy relief more than anything else. Because this show can get really gritty. Guys will get beat up, stabbed, shot, and, you know, randomly, just for no reason. Um, it's, it's a very, like, kind of like Saw-like approach to, I guess you would say, cop series. So they're really, really pushing the envelope. I even think they're going to have Professor Pig in this series, the guy who, like, mutilates people. So, yeah, this is going to be like a really gruesome show. So whenever Selena Kyle pops up, it's going to be like, hey, it's the plucky comedy relief. Anyway, one of the things that I find funny about this interaction is for a guy who later is going to butt heads with the Riddler in the series, um, it makes Jim come across kind of gullible in this episode where Selena tricks him in retrieving evidence from the sewer that he needs and then makes her escape. So master detective in the making, folks, foiled by a little girl. Now, what they're doing with the Penguin is very different and kind of out of character for any interpretation that we've seen thus far. In Gotham, Oswald is like a busboy for Fish Mooney, played by Jada Pickett, whom actually is pretty good as a villain, yet seems to be channeling a lot of Eartha Kitt at times, Purrs included, which, yeah, I don't quite get why she's doing that, unless her name was like um, something with a cat. It doesn't make sense that she would be doing that other than just paying an homage. Anyway, Oswald is seen as kind of a problem kid who's working his way into becoming the kingpin of Gotham, in a sense. But by the second episode, while they're building this up and you know that he's trying to do this, he gets kicked out of Gotham and spurned by his employer. And then, of course, uh, the GCPD thinks that Jim Gordon killed Oswald, when in reality, Jim fires his gun, like, up in the air and Oswald falls into the water and Jim in his Batman voice is like, never come back to Gotham. And I'm just sitting there face palming, like, why? Why is this happening? You know? Anyway, Oswald in the episode about the balloon man returns and it shows his struggle to survive on the city streets. No, I'm just kidding. He goes around stabbing people and stealing their shoes. No, I'm serious. He actually kills a guy for his shoes. He doesn't break into a store to steal some shoes to show up at the guy's job. Nope, he just kills him. And then no one seems to notice the difference that, you know, this big lanky guy is replacing this big thick guy who was washing the dishes the day before. But anyway, you know, it's not supposed to make sense. Uh, This is a mob establishment, after all. As long as you're doing your job, they don't really care about, you know, who or what you are. The only thing Gotham has right about the Penguin is the fact that he plays people off one another, which is something he totally does. He likes gathering information from the mob and giving it to the police and vice versa, then pitting the two against each other like chess pieces. That's something he enjoys. That's so Penguin. It also shows what Pangy is going to do later on in his life when giving information to the Bat family. You know, making them work for it or taking out another rival, things like that. Like playing people against each other. Though say what you will, minus the Arkham City Penguin, Oswald is a higher class of thug and good for Gotham later on. I mean, he runs a good black market establishment and doesn't really get his hands dirty. He has people to do that for him. Remember the Iceberg Lounge or his restaurant chain? Yeah, I don't see that happening in Gotham. He might get angry at the maitre d' and, uh, well, you probably know what will happen. 
But from what we've seen in this series, I would say that Oswald Cobblepot is going to turn into either the Burton or Arkham Penguin. Just another killer. In fact, most of the criminals are going to end up your garden variety psychopaths, rather than the villains we all know and love from the comics and other media. Don't even get me started on the young Ivy, I mean Pepper, or the fact that Harvey Dent is going to be introduced as a friend of Jim Gordon, not Bruce Wayne, Gordon, or that he's totally going to become Two-Face without Batman being around at all. This show is really going to give me a stroke. I mean, it's just, it's so bad. We have no idea what's going on with the Joker either, but most likely he will show up in the first season because every member of the cast keeps hinting and tweeting and tumbling that the Joker's coming. And it's like, no. If they do that, I'm done with the show. It's, no. Even if they were somehow able to do the killing joke thing, you know, with him being a struggling comedian who ends up getting this job and his wife gets killed by the mob or whatever... Yeah, I I still don't think it would work. Um, he would have to come much, much later in the series, like two years before they're ready to debut the Batman. Now, what's sad is this is how most people are, are going to remember the Batman mythos and how they transpired. It's almost as bad as the Guido shot Han first crap that we had to deal with years ago. And even some people today are getting that confused. I'm looking at you, Wikipedia. Seriously, we're going to need to hop in our TARDIS and fix all this stuff. I am so angry, like a tornado of anger swirling about right now. Which leads us finally to the future savior of Gotham City, little Bruce Wayne, who in reality is nothing more than an emo kid with lots of issues. Which, in all honesty, should be the first guy to end up as a resident of Arkham. Mm hmm. This Brucey is crazy, people. Aside from being Mr. Mopey and getting over his parents' death within a mm, few months' time, however, you know time-lapse works with those episodes. It doesn't seem like it's been very long. He's just kind of sitting in his chair. Hey, Alfred. Master Bruce, you should eat. I don't want to eat, Alfred. Master Bruce, you should read. I want to watch TV, Alfred. I mean, th this is the Bruce Wayne that's going to become Batman? I mean, come on. And the way that things are going, it looks like he's already kind of over it. Probably my biggest concern with how they're uh, approaching Bruce Wayne is he's starting to train without knowing what he's doing at all or where to start. He also never really swore vengeance upon his parents' grave, which is a very important part of his character and his progression towards the Dark Knight. Like, he has to have a goal. He doesn't just randomly start doing stuff until he actually commits himself to something. He did, however, try to inflict harm on himself by placing his hands in fire. Then when confronted by Alfred and Gordon, he replies, I'm trying to conquer fear. You know, kind of like a Batman line. I don't know about you, but any sane parent or guardian would take Bruce to see Hugo Strange or whatever psychiatrist was in Gotham at this point in time. And actually, Hugo's probably there right now, but this Bruce, he's just not likable, and he's not really doing anything. It's not like the kid is a bad actor or anything like that, but there's nothing to fuel this character. He's just sitting there on a smartphone, you know, watching TV or sword fighting with Alfred, and he's happy for one second, and then he's sad the next. It's like a bipolar Bruce Wayne. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like, the, where, where is the commitment? Where is the struggle? It's like he's just um, moved on to the state of acceptance. My parents are dead. There's nothing I can do. I'm just a kid. Wah. You know? And we know that Bruce doesn't do that. Another issue I have is not the bat motif that starts to prep Bruce for becoming the Batman. Nope. It's some nut vigilante called the Balloon Man that inspires Bruce to think about bringing crooks to justice. Though Balloon Man killed people by attaching them to weather balloons. So yeah, maybe this is the missing link and the puzzle to the Keaton Batman quest for justice. I mean, he did kill a lot of bad guys in unique ways and actually was pretty proud of himself like when he attached that bomb to the strong man when the strong man didn't think there was anything there and then poof, walks away with a grin. Yeah, that's totally Balloon Man's MO. So yeah, there you go. There's the connection right there. Burton, Balloon Man. You want to know how I would make this show better? And no, I'm not going to submit this because I'd be better off like sending the script to Marvel because they might actually do something with it. First, what I would do after about, oh, I don't know, a week or so of Bruce mutilating his body and coming up with his cheesy pre-Batman lines would have Alfred send Bruce to the boarding schools so Bruce would not be around during his parents' murder investigation. In fact, in the various ages of DC Comics, Bruce wasn't in Gotham for most of his young adult life which is part of the reason Gotham got worse, because the Wayne influence was completely gone. It wasn't there. This would make things a heck of a lot easier to do when the ratings take a dive and Batman's needed to save the show, because he will. 
With Bruce gone after season one, the show could be mended. Mended! Not really fixed or made better, but you could actually have some type of, like, continuity, a progression, you know, a beginning and an end, not just... Ugh. Now, let me repeat myself. It's not that the kid is a bad actor or anything. It's just his presence doesn't work for what the series will need later on. Also, it makes it very easy for Batman to travel the world and start his training. All the books and the tools that he's getting off Amazon won't help him turn into a good superhero. It's going to put him in the hospital. And also, it might even deter him from becoming that hero that Gotham needs. You know, it just, he needs somebody to teach you this stuff. You know, he needs to go travel the world. He needs to become the best aspect of humanity. And staying at home, playing on a smartphone, and interacting with Commissioner Gordon, or, excuse me, Detective Gordon, is not going to do that. So that's one way that they could sort of fix the show. Next, in terms of the villains on the show, I would not have any of them transform into the personalities we knew and love, including Harvey Dent. First and foremost, I would not show Harvey's split personality, nor his journey to become Gotham's DA. Maybe have him, like, studying for it or working some type of temp job at the GCPD, but not being a part of the Gotham's district attorney office. Not yet. Not until Batman's second year in costume. In fact, the show in general should only focus on one new future bad guy, like, every six episodes or so. Like, Mr. Zaz would have an arc. Penguin would have an arc and then disappear or go to England or something. You know, that way you're not saturated with all these different villains, and the police could be the focus of this crime series and face off against the mob, which would actually work very well. If everything got resolved by Gordon in a few seasons, again, no point to Batman showing up whatsoever. Maybe Gordon could take down one crime family, like the Maronis or something, which could fuel Sal's anger towards Dent and Gordon, which Harvey might end up being the accidental target for the acid that transforms him into Two-Face. That right there, folks, is a way better way of bringing out the character of Two-Face than whatever Gotham will probably come up with. You're welcome. So after six seasons and one crime family falls, then things in Gotham could change a little bit and the corruption would lessen just a tad since some of the judges and officials are no longer protected by these powerful mob folks. But as we've seen with the episode like Balloon Man, crime bosses and other corrupted officials die in pretty much every episode to the point no one will be left who's evil to run Gotham. Unless, of course, there's a lot of people standing in line, but they've actually introduced important characters from the comics that are now dead dead already who Batman interacts with so it's like oh where are they going with this instead the smart thing to do which I would do is move the focus to Gordon dealing with the Wayne murders and tackling lesser known crimes until the series progresses and you know he moves to a different crime unit then it makes sense that he could do more stuff but just being a detective and doing all that stuff and making the promotions no it's not gonna work sadly the way the show is going Gordon is probably gonna have Gotham become Metropolis by himself making Batman not important whatsoever or again the cause of Gotham's further disease in order to make things interesting, since they've ruined the Gordons already with the horribly out-of-character Renee Montoya, since Barb is already dealing with temptation, why not bring in Sarah to mess with Gordon, then kill off Montoya, so you have some type of, like, I don't know, stuff going on with Barbara that she needs to go back to Gordon or something. It would be a service to the fans of Montoya because Gotham has ruined her. That or make her the question or something. Just do something and stop making it, like, about this stupid love affair. It's just dumb. Also, make Bullock hate capes for some reason. Maybe have a vigilante kill, like, a family member of his or, you know, steal his donuts. You know, do something that is going to turn Bullock's view to not liking capes and vigilantes in general so he can actually work with Gordon and try to root out the bad cops because they can't rely on the vigilantes. That right there would prolong the series and create kind of like a buddy cop mechanic between Gordon and Bullock. Also, it would take a really long time to clean up the GCPD and all the corrupt officials. Unless, of course, this is Arkham Origins. In that case, cleaning up the department only takes about three months to four years, give or take. In all seriousness, though, this show is a joke. And I'd be surprised if it makes more than three seasons in its current structure. Yes, it has some good qualities, but if you guys want me to keep watching this show, I'll start practicing my rooftop escapades again. It's that bad. I'd take busted limbs to watching this show. I wasn't kidding when I said Nightwing the web miniseries. 
which is only five episodes, by the way, five episodes made by fans is better than this show. It's so bad that it ruins Batman. It ruins everything about Batman. Even Jim Gordon, it ruins Jim Gordon. How is it even possible? I don't even like to consider this an Elseworlds story. It's like one of the Mad Hatter's bad dream worlds gone awry. Maybe that's what this is. Nothing more than a perchance to dream. I mean, seriously, if I hold my hand over a candle, maybe, just maybe, this nightmare will end. Either that or I'll get horribly burned. And with that ends another Arkham Wednesday and my discussion on Gotham. I'm not saying the show can get better, but what I'm seeing, the show is just gonna... If you want a good DC comic show to watch, then check out The Flash. They have actually taken the source material, they've done Barry Allen justice, they've done all the characters justice, there's gonna be reverse Flash in it, there's uh, nods to Bruce Wayne actually being around in the Arrowverse. There's a lot of stuff that's coming that is going to be interesting, whereas Gotham is just kind of like, eh... You know, if you like police dramas, I'm not going to deter you from watching it. But if you're watching it thinking that this is a good thing for Batman, then you are seriously lying to yourself. And your time is best spent watching the animated series or something else. It, it's just, it's a terrible show. But anyway, thanks so much for taking the time to watch another Arkham Wednesdays. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your night. And I will see you next week with a lore-centered episode on what you know and love. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of here.